Hi, welcome. Today's focus will be tending to spring's wood element in the five element Chinese uh, system. And we'll specifically be looking at the liver and gallbladder meridians. So please uh, get any props that you might need like uh, blankets or two blocks. And um, the wood element, as you see, is the organs that are associated with it or the liver and gallbladder. The season is spring. The emotions when the chi is not flowing fluidly through these meridians is anger and irritability. And the color is green. So we'll be working with that today. And also as uh, we'll be doing a lot of hip work. Um, so I sh have a picture here of the muscles uh, that support um, the hip joint, the femur bone. Uh, we'll be exploring the gluteus medius, the gluteus maximus, the tensor fascia latte, really rebalancing the uh, muscles and the fascial tissue that surround the hip. And I will be highlighting some um, meridian points of the liver and the gallbladder. So I hope you enjoy. I hope everybody's okay. We're gonna come into our hero's pose. Today is about um, liver and gallbladder. Uh, it's springtime and these are the meridians that need the most nourishment during this time. So in your Varasana, you have your block. I usually put it in between the feet. I know there's a lot of teachers here but I still like to review. And I like to take the care of um, uh, smushing down my calves, just giving that little uh, acupressure awareness in the calves, the Achilles tendon, this whole urinary bladder area. And then bringing, uh, you know, your flesh out so your sit bones are securely down into the earth. And then I do this a lot. You take your thumb, wrap around the hand. This is an actual mudra to settle yourself, both hands. And we press the high arch. But today's intention is this is a big uh, kidney point that we're pressing against, but really bring the attention to the top of the foot and really massage from back to forth. Um, I think soon I'm going to be incorporating some like tennis balls in our yin practice because I've been working with that to give myself some actual more acupressure relief in the yin posture. So right now there's a really potent point on the front of the foot, a liver point that helps with entire muscular tension. And then today's mudra is gonna be uh, interlacing our hands at the heart center. And just maybe closing your eyes. Just closing the eyes, trying to, and please mute yourself if you haven't already. This mudra is to nourish your inner being. It's also for depression, but it's um, a posture, a mudra that brings kindness. So just mute yourself if you haven't so everybody can be with their breath and their body. And so just checking in what you brought at this moment, if there's irritation in the body, if there is just heat in the body, or maybe there is a sense of calm. So yin is a practice that brings us back to the earth. Yang is the heavens, yin is the earth. And it's also a cooling practice. 
So just setting the uh, intention today for attention. As Mary Oliver says, I love her quote, and I'm going to screw it up. Just you're determined to do the only thing you can do, determined to save the only life you can save. Little kindness for yourself today. And then we'll release our hands and we're going right into it. So we're working a lot on the hips today because the liver meridian and the gallbladder meridian really run through this hip area. And there's a lot of muscles that get very tight that can affect the rest of our body. So we're going right into pigeon. And we'll start on our right leg. So you have your blanket, and I've shown this variation before if you have a strap, but bring some support for under your right sitting bones. We're going right into the pigeon, or they call it in yin swan pose. And again, if you want to bring it a little deeper um, to affect the psoas, we will take the strap. So it is warm out, so that is why I'm going deep pretty quickly. But this is not necessary. You don't need the strap and you can just bring yourself down because you'll still get the effect on the left side. So just settling yourself in the posture. If you do choose to take the strap, I like to take it around the shoulder. And it gives me a little bit of awareness. This is a, a potent lung point right at the armpit. And you could bring yourself down. And then just settle in. So if you had found that there was agitation in the system, I'll invite you to bring and make the breath a little longer. So each exhale, just a little bit longer. And beginning our practice with this scanning of the body. And in the Theravada Buddhist practice, we start with the body and the breath. So just taking a moment of refuge, and really there's only always refuge just in this moment that we have now. So feeling yourself land, the heaviness of the bones, the rhythm of the breath. And if there still is irritation or deep sensation in the body, you're just bringing awareness to it. Learning to let be. And we stay here for about five minutes, I have my little clock. And I think I might have read this quote before in a couple of weeks ago. If you are uncomfortable, if you are in deep pain or angry or yearning or confused, remember you don't have a problem. You have a life because being human is not hard because you're doing it wrong. It's hard because you're doing it right. You will never change the fact that being human is hard. So you must change your idea that it was ever supposed to be easy. And that is from um, Glennon Doyle who I've recommended the, that book to a couple of my friends here. So there are these hindrances that have been coming up in all of us, this restlessness, this 
irritation, this anger, this sadness. And these, it, it, it's incredibly uncomfortable. And these are actually the five hindrances in Buddhism. They identified them, these strong emotions. But it has also been taught that the awareness of these strong feelings and these emotions, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's part of the purification process to first become aware because really the emotion underneath those hindrances is love. It's this core feeling, this core human desire to take care of ourselves, to bring compassion to ourselves. And these strong emotions are just happening and popping up and for us to wake up to that. But it's difficult, like the difficulty that you might be experiencing in your body right now. So from here, I want you to slowly undo, if you have the strap, and bring yourself up. And I want you to slide this right leg back, but you're going to, this is how it'll look. You'll turn it around to, your right leg is back and you're gonna take a half frog and land in a half frog sphinx. So, I'll talk a little bit about these meridians that we're affecting today. We were just working with the gallbladder meridian and you might feel that reverberation in the body, the energy body. The gallbladder meridian starts at the corner of the eye and it comes up the skull behind the ear behind right down the jaw and the neck and the shoulder down the whole side seam of the body to this outer part of the hip the gluteus medius down the it band to the knee to the knee to the outer calf to the fourth toe there are 49 points, I think, or 44, something like that. Uh, and it is the Yang Meridian to the liver. And the liver runs on the inside of the leg. So if you're here and you want to just bring it up a notch, you can take your hands, your arms straight, and what will happen is the shoulders will come up and the hands are turned out. And here it might be a, a little more intense sensation in the lumbar spine. We're getting into that kidney fear area, the emotion. But I want you to try to bring yourself back to the body, the heaviness, the earth quality of the bones and try to release the muscles, the tissue. Now, if there happens to be any sensation in the bottom of the feet, like tingling or in the fingers, that is a sensation you don't want to have. And so you'll come back. But we're not staying in this posture for too long. Just another breath here. You can take the elbows and even allow your thumbs to go into the eyebrows and start to palpate the eyebrows a bit just to release any tension. This is a potent point, which I talk about a lot, urinary bladder meridian.
and just continually checking in. We'll slide the right leg back, take a moment on our belly, check in again. And then take the hands to the side, come up and continue on to the left side. So again, using the strap, if you need, or you liked, taking the hand, the strap around the shoulder, taking yourself down. Maybe this is something that is available to you. And maybe you need to forget about the strap today and just be here in the body because there can be enough going on in the hips. And we know that, you know, the hip socket is a ball and socket joint, the largest joint in the body with a lot of responsibility, holding up the entire upper body, the lower body, and a lot of the muscles that surround this joint, the fascial tissue can get very tight. So in this position that we're currently working with is getting many areas of that part of the body, this gluteus medius, which, which is the muscle that stabilizes the hip. It is on the outside of the hip. If you are sitting all day, this muscle can get very tight. So releasing it in this way will also help deeper muscles that can get very tight and aggravate things like the piriformis, which sits on top of the sciatic nerve. So just layer by layer softening in. Also on the right side, this psoas, which connects to the upper part of the spine and the inner leg if you're sitting all day has incredible effects or if you're a biker, opening this muscle is crucial. So again, we'll slide coming out slowly. And I want you to slide the left leg back and then open it to a half frog, coming again into the sphinx posture, this half frog sphinx. And then playing with either staying on your forearms or taking the arms straight, taking the shoulders up towards the ears and being here. And I'm coming out, but you are not. <laughs> you are staying. And this is something by Jeff Foster. And this I think is like the epitome of what, of yin. Do not try to open your heart. That would be a subtle movement of aggression toward your immediate embodied experience. Never tell a closed heart to open. It will shut more tightly to protect itself, feeling your resistance and disapproval. A heart unfurls only when conditions are right. Your demand for openness invites closure. This is the supreme intelligence of the heart. Instead, learn to bow to the heart in its current state. If it is closed, let it be closed. Sanctify the closure, make it safe. Safe even to feel unsafe. 
I want you to slide that leg back and just rest on your belly. And I'll continue with this reading. The other thing is to trust. Trust the opening and the closing of the heart. Trust the expansion, trust the contraction. This is the heart's way of breathing, safe, unsafe, safe, unsafe. The beautiful fragility of being human and all held in the most perfect love. Remember, this is the time for refuge, just in this moment, this breath. Okay, we're going to turn ourselves around. And this next pose is a, a little tricky. It's not that tricky, but some people don't always feel this posture. I call it in the yin um, world, they call it like banana asana, but I like to call it like a on your back triangle pose. So I take a strap and let's start because I'm on my left side on the left leg and I take it out like I'm going to do triangle pose. And then I take my right arm and I hold the other end of the strap. I make a huge loop and it's triangle pose. And then I walk my right leg in a little as far as I can until I sort of feel this very subtle opening from my as is point, which is the hip bone to the inner groin, which is a very important muscle actually that gets quite tight. That is really the culprit of the IT band. So I'll tell you what the muscle is called in a second, but just taking that right foot closer and closer. Now, what if you don't have a strap? It doesn't matter. You can take the right arm up and you can just take it up, lean the arm towards the left. So you're making this big curvature on that right side. Now, if you don't feel anything, you could just stay because it's very relaxing or you can take it in a different way. You can take both hands overhead and just maybe cross the right leg over the left and move your body to the left. It's a very subtle, for some people, it's extremely subtle. For some people, it's um, just perfect. And it is reaching this whole gallbladder line. For me, I absolutely feel the energy that line through the corner of the eye down that whole right side seam of the body. So try to bring or sense the attention by that as is point, which is the part of the they call it the hip bone that kind of protrudes out. There is a muscle and it's sort of, they call it like the gene, put your hands in the pocket muscle. That's the direction as if you were putting your hands in your pocket. It's called the tensor fascia latte. And it's a muscle, this strange little hip flexor for those bikers or runners or walkers that get very tight and it can affect the um, IT band from the hip all the way to the knee. So we'll just stay here for one more minute. So the emotion of the liver and the gallbladder in this springtime, you know, it's about the coming, right? The element is wood. Wood is solid, flexible. But as we see in the nature of our world, it takes a lot of effort to bloom. 
And so with a lot of effort and work can be a lot of irritation and restlessness until we feel grounded and rooted. And that is the nature of this time of year, the nature of liver gallbladder meridian. So start to open up, release. And for me, I really felt that intensely. Just take a moment, especially on the right side, come into pentacle. The arms are out to a T, spread the feet, the legs, and then bring the right leg out again to the right and take the left leg in. And again, maybe you like the idea of the strap around the right foot, taking it out. Maybe you can hold that left arm holds the strap. Maybe you take the left foot in towards the right. Or again, if you don't have a strap, you just can take the right hand holding the left wrist. You can take the left leg in, more of a banana shape. And so noticing the difference between both sides. I'm coming out. You are staying in. Being aware of how you feel in this moment. Releasing, scanning the body of tension, of tightness. Let this pose with each breath, maybe bringing a little more space in the body. More space in the breath. This appreciation of just this moment. Maybe there's nothing else that we can control or do except to be present in this moment here. and acknowledging this compassionate gesture that we're giving ourselves with this time. So we just have a couple more minutes, not even a couple more minutes, one more minute in the posture. So I love this poem. And it's this idea, this kind of theme that I'm really thinking about um, after I heard you all should listen to, he's, I consider him a teacher of my Mingor Rinpoche. I read a couple of his books. He was on 10% Happier. And it's this idea of how these strong emotions really underneath the anger, the irritation that it's really, this human desire of just needing love. And so this poem, we're going, I'll take you into the poem on the next pose. So we're going to take the pose out and find some steadiness in pentacle. Just noticing the left and the right side. The left side is naturally your yin side. The right side is your yang side, which is really interesting because even in science, they have identified the breathing on the left nostril as being predominantly for your parasympathetic nervous system. And the breathing on the right nostril is the sympathetic, which is kind of like 
yeah, I told you so in the yogic world with, you know, they've in yoga, they've been doing Nadi Shodhana forever. So bend the legs, turn to one side, bring yourself up to sit. And as I said, we're getting really intense in these poses. So I'm going to give you options, but we're going right into frog. And I like to take blocks and bring the knees as wide as you can. So they really look like the knees. And I would have, make sure you have your mat. So the knees are wide. The knee to the ankle are happening here. Now, let's say this is just not happening for you. The point of the pose, obviously, we want to um, get into the inner groin. This is the major pathway of the liver. But if this is just not happening for you today, that is okay. And if you need more of a release type of practice, come onto your back and take butterfly, okay? And this, you know, yes, it's not as acupressure intense, which I'll talk about when you're in frog, but it can be incredibly potent. The other thing that you can do if the frog, you want to still have some pressure, you can take it into child's pose or more of a modified frog. But the reason why I love frog for us is because there are a lot of potent points down this inner leg. Specifically, um, there are, uh, we have about 14 points in the liver meridian starting at the big toe. And then they run up this inner part of the leg. Now, when we are pressing on this inner knee in frog, this is liver nine, which is a very intense point, you know, right where the bone, where we are putting our body, this heaviness, you can feel it almost an achiness. So this benefits muscle spasms, muscular pain in the body, this springtime liver, gallbladder. If you have noticed this, um, it's known, imbalances are known to show up as like um, traveling pain. And I've been experiencing that. Like, oh, you know, I'll have pain one moment in my shoulder, then I'll have a pain in my foot. It's this... Um, muscular pain in the body shows up more in the spring season. So this liver nine point that we're pressing on uh, helps for, um, it's a very important point for detoxifying the system during the change of season and also for this muscular pain that we might be feeling. So we just have Another minute in the posture, so try to settle. And here's the poem that I promised. The Patience of Ordinary Things by Pat Schneider. It, it is a kind of love, is it not? How the cup holds the tea. How the chair stands sturdy and foursquare. How the floor receives the bottoms of shoes or toes or how soles of feet they know where they're supposed to be. I've been thinking about the patience of ordinary things. How clothes, how they wait respectfully in closets, and how soap dries quietly in the dish, and towels drink the wet from the skin of the back, and the lovely repetition of stairs, 
And honestly, what is more generous than a window? I love that poem. Take the hands up. Oof. All right. So this is, you know, be very delicate, very delicate when you're getting up. You know, you notice how these tissues respond so differently than our muscles. So you have to be really gentle, really gentle. We're taking our last pose, these short, potent practice today. So we're going to slowly bring ourselves on our back. Find the back. And we're going to visit again now the outside. We just did the adductors for the liver. We're going again to the gallbladder and we'll affect some liver points in our body. So we'll bring the knees in and take the right leg and wrap it around. Hold yourself for a moment. This feels kind of good. The right leg is around the left. Take a breath here. And then we're, we'll scoot ourselves over to the right and take the knees down to the left. Now, you can unbind your legs and bring the right leg even further out and take the right arm out. So it's a twist. And as we know, this, these twists do affect the upper part of the body as well. But we are feeling it hopefully down the outside of the right leg. If you want to make things a little more intense, you can bend the left leg and hold the left foot. I actually, today, it is so warm that I don't want any engagement. The yin is, as I said, really a cooling practice. A cooling practice for the mind, for the body. So just allowing with each breath a heaviness to overcome. Our whole body. I'm still here. <laughs> so we just have one more minute. And to bring some appreciation to the actual liver. So the liver lives on the right side of our body underneath the diaphragm. And it does so much for us related to digestion, detoxification, and our immunity. And it is a storage area for really important vitamins and minerals in our body. In Chinese medicine, the color is green. And it is thought to be a very potent practice to visualize the actual organ and with each breath, almost like a tonglen practice, bringing in a um, healthy green uh, nourishing color on each inhale. And then on each exhale, imagining any kind of 
gray smoke just leaving the body, leaving anything that is not needed, bringing in the healthy, leaving the unneeded, detoxifying. So we're going to bring our legs up now. So again, really being gentle with the body. It's amazing how these poses, because we're not doing, using the muscular action, we are getting into the deeper tissues of the ligaments and the tendons, the joint capsules. So now hug the knees in, take the left leg over, cross at the thigh, and just feel the knees into the body. And then shuffle the hips over to the left, maybe bring the knees almost as high as the navel, take yourself over to the right. And maybe just landing here on this side, I actually like the crossing of the legs for some reason. It's giving me more of a heaviness. But if you would prefer outstretching the left leg, you can do that. The arms again are out into a T. The head, you can have it neutral, or if you'd like this extra kind of a stretch, you can turn the head to the opposite direction of the leg. And remember, the mouth is closed, but relaxed. And the breath, remember the breath and check in. Check in how the body feels now. And just, we have one more minute in the posture. So the liver and gallbladder are said to govern muscles, ligaments, tendons. So during this part of the year, there can be a little more aches and pains than usual. The sense organ is the eyes. And there is an inner channel that actually goes to the eyes. And so this idea when the liver and the gallbladder are balanced, there is this courage, there is this recognition of compassion. When it's blocked, there is more irritation and more anger, but underneath as we were saying the anger, the irritation is always this desire, our natural desire for love, to be loved. So from here, again, really moving mindfully and slowly, we're going to unwind, just unwind, taking ourselves to neutral. Maybe the feet come to the floor. The legs are bent. Take the arms over the head for a moment, maybe holding opposite elbows. 
just checking in. Maybe making any kind of last movements before we just do our final rest. So just taking the legs either straight or maybe the final rest does look like the knees into one another. Maybe taking a blanket underneath your head. And possibly landing in that mudra again with the hands, the fingers interlaced by the solar plex area, if that feels comfortable for you, or by the heart area. You know, as a teacher, I used to see a lot of my students do this mudra at their heart, and they had no idea that it was a mudra. It's just, it was a place for their hands to feel comfortable. And I then, I stumbled upon it and it was an actual mudra of bringing compassion to oneself, relief of depression. And it's just so interesting that the body knows, the body innately knows. this wish for comfort, this wish for compassion, this universal wish that we all have. 